Good morning and welcome to St. Stephen's. It's good to see you. Come on in if you're still outside. There's plenty of seats. Well done for everyone remembering to turn your clocks forward. Always encouraging. Hope you're feeling bright and breezy this morning as we gather to worship. We're going to, um, uh, this morning, continue our sermon series in Lent, looking at the ways in which we can meet God in different ways. And Ruth's going to be speaking to us. We're going to be sharing in communion in just a moment. And we've got our children's groups and our youth groups as well. But we're going to begin in worship. So can I invite you to stand? And a psalm, Psalm 30 says this, I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have raised me up and have not let my foes triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you have healed me. You have brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored me to life. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks to his holy name. So, Father, we come before you this morning with hearts open and we pray that as we worship you now, as we gather around your table, as we learn from your word, we would know your presence with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do have a seat, and we're just going to take a moment's quiet as we come into the Lord's presence to acknowledge before him the things that we've done wrong in these last few days. All of us live lives where we turn our backs on God from time to time. We do those things that we call sin, but when we come to the Lord, we can know him forgiving us and setting us on a fresh path. So, Father, show us those things that we need to say sorry to you for now.
So, Father, may we know the forgiveness that Jesus has won for us on the cross. May we know that your love extends even to the depths of our wickedness, that you forgive us our sins. So, Lord, we ask you to confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. So friends, the Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. And as your son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because you give us the spirit of discipline that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace as we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And so, Father, call into mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share 
in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. To invite all baptized Christians to receive communion here today. Uh, do come forward as directed. If you would prefer to receive gluten-free bread or non-alcoholic wine, please ask us as we serve. We have those available. If you don't want to receive communion, you're still invited to come for a prayer of blessing. Just keep your head bowed, your hands by your side, and I will pray with you. And um, please receive communion at the front, drink your wine at the front, and then put your individual glasses uh, to the side. shadow of the darkness pressing in. Only the only overshadowing underneath your wings overshadowing. No refuge will I seek but God alone. No hiding place save Until these troubles pass, my heart will sing. Praise to the holy overshadowing. Underneath your wings, overshadowing. You are my shield and my glory. You are the lifter of my head. And though the storm Safe within, beneath the 
Let's pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In a moment, our children and young people will go to their groups. A couple of notices. First of all, when you came in, you should have all been given one of these. Uh, if you haven't got one, please be given one as you leave. Perhaps the welcome team can make sure um, they have available. Um, this just gives details of all that's going to be happening, not this week, but the following week in Holy Week, uh, where there's lots of extra stuff going on as we walk with Jesus in the way of the cross. Please do take that, have a look, and see what's going on. And if you are coming on Maundy Thursday to our Maundy Thursday meal and communion, we would ask you to sign the list in the coming days. Uh, it's not essential. If you haven't signed, you can still come. But in terms of ensuring there's enough food from everyone, it's really helpful if you can sign that up well in advance. Also near the door are some little packs of these Easter cards, uh, which we would love not to waste, but to get through people's doors and in people's hands. There's about 10, 20 in a pack, so it's not a lot. If everybody takes a pack, puts it through their neighbours' doors, gives it to their family and friends, then lots of people will know about some of the things that are going on here at Easter. So if at the end of this morning we can make sure that table's clear, that would be really, really helpful. <laughs> Next Sunday is the first day of Holy Week, Palm Sunday, and as usual we will begin the 10.30 service outside in the car park. So do come early, grab a cup of coffee first, but then we will gather with the 9 o'clock congregation and have a, an outdoor act of witness. And finally, uh, don't forget that our Lent appeal is still open, open till Easter. Uh, if you want to give either to the appeal for um, uh, councillors in Mozambique or for Easter eggs for the Marylebone Project, you can do so online with the card reader or with a yellow gift aid envelope with your donation in. So. Remember all of that, lots of stuff going on as we approach Easter. We're going to continue in sung worship now, if you stand. And during the second song, as we start singing the second song, our children will go to jam through those doors. Young people go to the youth group through the back. Let's stand and worship. When 
darkness seems to hide his face. I raise on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anger holds within the veil. My anger holds within the veil. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless stand before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a savior, the hope of nations. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures. Fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. The Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave shine a light and let the whole world see we're singing for the glory of the risen king jesus shine a light and let the whole world see we're singing for the glory of the risen king My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. Praise the hallelujah in the presence.
presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. fight for me cause I'm, I'm gonna, gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive I raise a hallelujah a hallelujah I will watch the darkness flee I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery I raise a hallelujah fear you lost your hold on me Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a Father, help us to raise a hallelujah when everything crowds in around us. To raise a hallelujah when everything seems dark. To raise a hallelujah when the pressures of life overwhelm. Lord, help us to know your presence. To know hope rising up. To know the truth that death is defeated through the resurrection of Jesus. Lord, we come to you today as people who need to know that hope and that promise. And as we think more about that this morning, as we think what it is to know you when we're under pressure, Lord, would you speak to each one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Do have a seat. Anne's going to come and read to us. Then Ruth is going to speak to us. Today's reading is taken from Genesis, chapter 28, verse 10, page 30 in the New Test in the Bibles in the pews. Jacob's dream at Bethel. Jacob left Bathsheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth, with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, 
and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you, and I will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised to you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking, and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear, so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, thank you so much for scripture. Thank you for all the stories recorded that teach us so much. And I pray you take what I've prepared, Lord. Pray you breathe your life through it into our hearts and minds this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So in 1981... Music legends Freddie Mercury and David Bowie summed up what many can identify with as a core experience of humanity when they sang, pressure pushing down on me, pressing down on you, no man ask for. Yep, I'll take a moment for you to just go under pressure in your head, or maybe go ding, 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 ding. Any Gen Zers in the room and you don't know what I'm talking about, just ask your parents to play it for you later. (laughs) We all feel under pressure sometimes, don't we? Work deadlines, family stress, uh, financial worries, um, caring responsibilities, health concerns. These things do sometimes feel like a real weight pressing down on us and making life challenging. Well, this is not a modern phenomenon. It's a coarse experience of humanity. And today, uh, in the text, we see a man under pressure. And as we look at the story of Jacob together, we will unpack a bit of how we find God when we are under pressure, struggling or in discomfort. So grab a Bible from the chair in front of you, and let's have a look. So we're in Genesis, right at the beginning of the Bible, chapter 28. Um, Anne said it was page 30. Looking at verse 10 ish. So we find Jacob on a journey. He's left Beersheba and he's on his way to Haran. Why is he traveling? Well, he's on the run for his life. Um, Jacob is a twin and he's the younger twin and he has deceptively swindled his older brother Jacob out of his birthright and. his father's blessing, uh, which by rights was the firstborn sons. And it's interesting because Jacob um, in Hebrew means he grasps the heel, which is a kind of pun on the fact that he was a twin and he came out second grasping the heel of his brother. But also, 
In Hebrew, there, the idiom, he grasps the heel, meant he's deceptive or the deceiver. So Jacob is actually called the deceiver, which is interesting considering uh, what he does. But you can read about that story when you go home. And his brother is understandably mad at him for doing this. Um, In chapter 27, um, if you have a look at verse 41, it says, Esau held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him. He said to himself, the days of mourning for my father are near, then I will kill my brother Jacob. (laughs) So... (laughs) So the, Rebecca, Jacob's mum, she tells him he has to go away. And she makes the excuse that he needs to find himself a wife. Uh, and the local women are all Hittites. They're not from their family. So she sends them off, him off to stay with her brother and her father to find a wife from her family. So Jacob is running for his life. And it gets dark and he has to stop to sleep. And he lies down on the ground. He finds a handy stone to be his pillow. And somehow, amazingly, he falls asleep. And he has this dream. And in the dream, he sees the stairway with angels going up and down. And he sees the Lord. And God reveals himself by saying, in verse 13 of chapter 28, I am the Lord, your, um, I am the, Lord the God of your father, Abraham, and of the God of Isaac, who is Jacob's grandfather and father. And then God promises some amazing things to Jacob in verses 13 to 15. He promises him that his um, descendants and he will give the land on which he's lying, uh, that your descendants will be many, they'll be like the dust of the earth, the whole world will be blessed through them, and he promises that he will watch over Jacob, he'll be with him um, and never leave you until his promise is fulfilled. It's important to note at this point that Jacob has done nothing whatsoever to deserve this. Um, He's Jacob the deceiver. He's done all the wrong things up to this point. And the pressure he's under um, is largely due to his own actions. At this point in his life, he is in an uncomfortable place physically, and he's in an uncomfortable place metaphorically because he's been conniving and fraudulent, and he's grasped at being blessed. And yet here, he actually gets a blessing from God himself, and all he had to do was fall asleep. You see, God had been planning to give Jacob the blessing all along. If you turn back to chapter 25, verse um, 23, we see God talking to Jacob's mum while she's pregnant with the twins. It says, the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other and the elder will serve the younger. So God has this plan to bless the nations, um, to have this sort of chosen line of people out of whom eventually generations down the line, the Messiah Jesus is going to come from this line. And, and that's his, God's great salvation plan. And it includes Jacob. Despite his brokenness, despite his character flaws, despite his mistakes, God promises to bless him and be with him. In fact, God so identifies with Jacob that from here on in, when God sort of um, announces himself to Moses and his people down the line, he calls himself the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He actually includes it in his name. And if you're anything like me, your first response might be, what? He doesn't deserve it. He's not exactly a faith hero. He's just a horrible person in many ways, Jacob is. I mean, even after this amazing dream, he still doesn't really, he's not sure. He says in verse 21 and 22 of chapter 28, Jacob makes a vow saying, if God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey, blah, blah, blah. Then the Lord will be my God. So he kind of is still kind of like, mm, God, if you do what, what you say and if you're good to me, then, you know, you can be my God. It's like God owes him something before he'll make a commitment. So what is God doing? Why I wouldn't do that if I was God. And then I remember... I remember that none of us actually deserve it. That's the whole point. 
of what God reveals to us in this book in many ways. To reveal a God who longs to bless us and be with us, even though we don't deserve it. Despite our brokenness, despite our character flaws, despite our mistakes, even when we treat God as if he owes us something in return for our commitment and worship. When we are under pressure and in discomfort, either of our own making or just because we live in a broken world, God still longs to bless us and be with us. And God can even use whatever pressured or uncomfortable circumstances we find ourselves in. Jacob, but later on in the story, he, he gets to his uncle's family and he's there for the next 20 years and he has quite a tough time. Him and his uncle are kind of trying to outdo each other all the time. And uh, he has a problem with wives. Um, that it's a, lot, it's a stressful time for him. And you can go home and read all about that. And yet, he is fruitful. He ends up having 12 sons, the famous 12 sons of Jacob. And God uses all that. God's salvation plan is worked through those sons to bless the world. And it's being worked out despite the discomfort and pressure, and actually even because of it. We're fast approaching Holy Week. And we will journey again together through the last days of Jesus' earthly life. And we will see the discomfort of Gethsemane with Jesus facing the prospect of his own death on a cross where he'll be hung up and there will be crushing pressure even to take a breath. And yet, God's salvation plan to bless the world and be with us gets worked out even through that. Jesus' death and resurrection defeat the sin and the brokenness and the powers and principalities that kept us as slaves. And it sets us free to choose to be with God to receive his blessing, and then partner with him to help be his blessing to the nations. This is the victory we proclaim every time we come here and we take communion together. And then we leave here and we go out into the world to help God implement it into all the places of pressure and discomfort that we encounter. I'm not saying that God gives us these pressures, just to torture us, or even because, you know, he's got this great plan. And I'm not saying that any pressure or discomfort or uncomfortableness we're going through, that God's um, given out to us and doled it out for a purpose. But what I am saying is that in this fallen world, because of Jesus' victory on the cross, God can win with any hand that gets dealt. He can use the pressures we find ourselves in for good, even though he's not responsible for them. He won't let the pressures in our lives get the last word. God wins. And his salvation plan for the nations is not just a macro thing about the whole cosmos, although it certainly is that. His salvation plan means that he can actually use the pressures and discomfort in our own lives for our good personally. I remember once reading um, in a book about an experiment that some scientists did with an amoeba. And they took this little amoeba and they tried to see what would happen if they gave the amoeba a perfect environment. So the temperature was ideal, there was this constant food supply, they measured everything out perfectly, and they were like, let's sit back and watch this happy little amoeba, and it died. There's something about challenges, about pressure, about discomfort in this world at the moment that God redeems to become good for our growth as humans. In fact, some crazy people have cottoned onto this and they actively seek out pain and pressure for their own personal growth. Anyone ever run a marathon or planning to run a marathon? I know there's at least one person who's crazy enough to run a marathon. Right, good for you. You're mad, but good for you. But you probably chose to put yourself under that pressure because you'd hope you'd grow through the experience. I was watching a TV show the other night about people who do these incredible sports, like, like nothing against the guys who've run a marathon, but ultra marathons through the Sahara Desert for six days, racing over muddy cobbled streets in France on bikes, 
or swimming in icy waters, pressuring their bodies to the limits and enduring all kinds of pain. There was one lady called Amy, and she was doing the Sahara Ultra Marathon, and she had one prosthetic leg, as if it wasn't hard enough to do with two legs. And she said, I can never get stronger if I don't continue to challenge myself. So she recognized something in the fact that challenge and pressure bring growth and strength. I remember when I started my training journey for ordination and I packed up our family and we moved across country for two years in the middle of a pandemic for me to do theological study. I hadn't written an essay in goodness knows how many years. And the one thing I felt that God was saying while we went was that comfort and growth don't coexist. This is going to be an uncomfortable season, but you're really going to grow. And he was right. It was a jolly word, but it was right. And I feel like I'm still in that season. Um, I'm still training. I'm trying lots of new things. I'm trying to take risks. Everything I do gets critiqued. Um, I've got to know lots of people. The kids struggle with all the moves and are quite emotional and hard to deal with sometimes. And I feel anxious a lot of the time and uncomfortable. But I am really growing There's old character flaws that are being exposed and dealt with. New skills are being acquired. Old fears are being conquered. And my comfort zone is growing because I keep having to get out of it. And in all of it, God is blessing me and being with me in the discomfort and in the pressure and growing me. Even Jacob after all of his scheming and deceiving, and a literal wrestling match with God. Later, um, in chapter 32, um, Jacob has this wrestling match with God, and he ends up with a physical injury. A lot of translations say, like, his hip is wrenched out of the socket, and and something to do with his thigh. Um, But the, the translation also can be the word loins. So he gets a sort of groin injury, basically. And I'm not a man, but I've heard that if you get an injury in that area, it can be quite discomforting or uncomfortable. Jacob finally seems to grow as a person when he meets his brother again. And in chapter 3, verse 11, he says, he's bought bought a whole ton of flocks for his brother to sort of make up for the fact that he stole his birthright and everything. And Esau, trying to be the bigger man, is like, no, you don't have to give me that, that's fine. But Jacob says, please accept the present that was brought to you, for God has been gracious to me, and I have all I need. This grasping deceiver finally recognizes that God has blessed him and that he has all he needs. He finds some contentment and stops grasping. All the pressure and discomfort in Jacob's life has furthered God's plan and it's grown him as a person. So today we can be encouraged by Jacob's story. Wherever we are under pressure, wherever, whatever discomfort we're living with at the moment, whether they're of our own making or not, God longs to bless us. He longs to be with us in it. He longs to take the difficult cards we've been dealt by the world and make a winning hand with them because he has the victory. He wants to work out his call on our life and his plan for the world through them. He wants us to grow into the men and women he created us to be. May we pray. Shall we stand? You might want to hold your hands out as a sign of being open to whatever God wants to do with us this morning. Close your eyes. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you win. We thank you that you use all things for good.
And the Holy Spirit, we ask that you would come and fill us again with the knowledge and the love of God working in our lives. And we just offer to you again all of the pressures on us in this life. And you may want to, in your mind, what's the thing that you feel most pressured by right now? What's the thing that's weighing you down and is causing you discomfort? And as you bring that before the Lord, let him show you how he's using it to grow you. And maybe you're not feeling any discomfort. You're quite comfortable, thank you very much. But maybe God wants to grow you. (laughs) Maybe he's calling you out of your comfort zone into a new ministry or a new challenge at work or something that's slightly uncomfortable and is going to be a challenge. Mm. Holy Spirit, bring that to mind if that's for anyone today that they would be brave and courageous and step into the growth you have for them, even though it might be scary and uncomfortable. In Jesus' name, amen. We do have a ministry team, so during the next song, Ian and Caroline are going to come up. If any of that sort of resonated with you, if there's a particular pressure you feel under, or if you feel like you're a bit comfortable, maybe there's a new challenge God is calling into, come and get some prayer. Or if there's anything else, it doesn't have to be a response to the sermon, God is always wanting to be with us. So if you want to experience him in your life today, come and join us for prayer just over in the corner by the painting on the wall. Praying that I thought uh, the words Jesus said, I am the bread of life. It's a song about that. Hungry I come to you, for I know you satisfy. I am empty, but I know your love does not run dry. So I So I wait for you, I'm falling on my knees, offering all of me, Jesus, your all this heart is living for. Let's sing it again, hungry. Hungry I come to you. For I know you satisfy. I am empty, but I know your love does not run dry. So I wait for you. So I
Lord, thank you that we can come to you when life just seems to overwhelm us. Lord, help us to know you walking with us this week in all that we go through. And Lord, we pray that you'd help us to be people who don't carry this load alone, but give it to you. Because you're so much bigger and more powerful than us. Come, Lord, come. Be with us in all that we experience this week. Amen. Amen. Going to sing our final song in a moment. Um, still people available to pray, and maybe uh, some people over there, but don't miss this opportunity. If you are needing God to be with you in a situation, today's the day. That's what the Lord says, today's the day. So um, do seek prayer as we continue to worship. In my wrestling and in my doubt, in my failures you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence you won't let go. In the questions your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa. You are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. I won't fear what tomorrow brings. With each morning, I rise and sing. My God's love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. shore. Far before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storm. Far before us, you're the brightest. So may Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day, this week and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.